Hey everybody! Let's talk about iron deficiency anemia. So, in previous videos we have talked about anemia. What's anemia? Also, microcytic anemia. Iron studies. So, if you need anything from previous subjects, please go ahead and watch previous videos first. So, this one can make sense. Let's talk about iron deficiency anemia. Tired and pale? Pale and tired. Some quick facts are about iron deficiency anemia. It's the most common cause of anemia worldwide. In the developing world, it's usually nutritional, like nutritional deficiency. In the developed world, it's usually acute blood loss from GI bleeding or peptic or especially peptic ulcer disease. It's the most common cause of nutritional deficiency worldwide. The risk population includes females. Why? Menstruation. Children. Why? Decrease intake. High demand because they are growing. What are the causes? Imagine that you are a businessman. So, when you have a problem, it's either decrease supply or increase demand or loss. Decrease supply such as nutritional deficiency or malabsorption. I'm not getting enough iron or I'm getting enough iron but I cannot absorb it. What's the difference? It's basically the same. Increase demand such as increased utilization. I need more iron now. I need more and more. Or loss, such as blood loss or hemolysis. The RBCs are being destroyed. So the causes of iron deficiency anemia are decreased supply, increased demand, or loss. Decreased supply, we said nutritional deficiency or malabsorption. Nutritional deficiency, such as prematurity. Premature babies are at more risk of getting iron deficiency anemia. Poverty and nutritional deficiency, they are not getting enough food or enough minerals. Also, old age, the same problem as the kids. Diet, some people who are strict vegans, they are not getting enough heme iron. As, of, as we have said before, there are two types of iron. The heme that we get from meat products and the non-heme from the vegetables. The heme iron is better absorbed than the non-heme. So people who are strict vegans, they eat only vegetables, they are increased risk of getting iron deficiency anemia. Malabsorption such as celiac disease or post-gastric surgery. How about increased demand? Increased utilization such as pregnancy. So the lady is not only feeding her body, she's feeding two bodies. She's, she needs more iron. Also lactation, same concept. Growth, I'm needing more iron because I'm building new cells. Loss, such as blood loss or intravascular hemolysis. Blood loss, such as peptic ulcer disease. Meckel's diverticulum, peptic ulcers usually in adults. Meckel's in kids. Because Meckel's has some gastric tissue in them, sometimes. So, they can bleed. Hookworm infection. Hookworm such as ancelostoma or Nicator Americans. Ancelostoma duodenale or Nicator Americans. Colon polyps can bleed. Colon cancer, of course, can bleed. These will lead to blood loss, which will lead to our deficiency anemia. Intravascular hemolysis it has to be intravascular so that blood will get broken down then eventually they will go through the kidney and they will lose a lot of iron there. Um, so we have microangiopathic hemolytic anemia and a condition called paroxysmal nocturnal hemoglobinuria. These are the causes of iron deficiency anemia. Decreased supply, increased demand or blood loss. Let's review. So hemoglobin consists of heme and globin. Heme consists of iron and protoporphyrin. So, 
when I have iron deficiency anemia, iron will be decreased. Heme decreased. Hemoglobin decreased. That's why it's anemia. <laughs> anemia, low hemoglobin and hematocrit. By definition, globin will be normal. Okay, since protoporphyrin will not have enough iron to bind with to form heme, protoporphyrin will start to pile up. Okay. Okay. Hematopoiesis. We have proerythroblast all the way down to the mature erythrocyte. Cells start up big, then they get smaller and smaller and smaller. So here is the mature red blood cell. The cells are waiting for cell division and they're waiting for iron. So if iron is not coming, they will keep decreasing in size like this, like this. We end up with small cells. That why That's why it's called microcytic anemia. They are still waiting for iron. By the same token, them being so small will get the hemoglobin inside them to look relatively bigger. So they are trying to mitigate the problem. Clinically, our deficiency anemia such as any like any other anemia tired and pale pale and tired sometimes i have angina sometimes i have murmur weak irritable exercise intolerance we have sometimes other associations such as plummer vinson syndrome with esophageal whips glossitis chelitis inflammation of the tongue and the lips Restless leg syndrome for an unknown reason. Restless leg syndrome is associated with iron deficiency anemia. This is high yield. Achlorhydrate. When we have talked about iron absorption, we have mentioned that um, HCl is necessary to convert the ferric iron into the ferrous, which is more readily absorbed. Also, there is an association with celiac disease, as we have mentioned. It's a malabsorption problem. We have spoon-shaped nails called coilonychia. Coilonychia. Coiled nail. Beeturia. You know, 10% of the general population, when they eat beets, they get red urine. In artificial anemia, almost all of them will get the beeturia. Pica. Pica is craving for ice. Not just ice, but any ice-containing drink, such as iced coffee. They just crave, they just want the ice. Why? I don't know. So, remember these associations. Also, the pica, or pica, is also known as Pagophagia. Hematology is all about lab results. The story of iron that we have iron in the serum gets on transferrin, the bounding protein, then gets stored in the tissue as ferritin. So, as an anemia, what will happen to hemoglobin and hematocrit? They'll both be decreased. That's a given. MCV. Since it's a microcytic, MCV is low. MCH and MCHC, they'll be low. It's an iron deficiency anemia. It's anemia. Reticulocytes will be low. Why is that? I don't have enough iron to make mature RBCs or even immature RBCs. I don't have enough iron, period. Why blood cells are usually normal? Except... There is one exception. I'll mention it later. Platelets. Platelets may get slight increase. Why is that? Because sometimes the erythropoietin is very similar to thrombopoietin. Okay, that's the theory. Other theory is that the now anemia of the blood is very thin. Let's try to make it thicker and more dense by producing more cells. I cannot produce RBCs. At least I can produce more platelets. What about the iron studies? 
that's crucial serum iron definitely decreased okay it's iron deficiency how about ferritin the stored iron the store comes from where from the serum so they're decreased how about TIBC the liver recognizes the problem says hey we're not having iron let's get more carriers to try to catch the last iron molecule left let's try our best so TIBC is increased and as we have said before ferritin and TIBC are always inversely related to each other percent saturation of course is decreased because percent saturation is the iron on the transferrin and since iron is decreased and the TIBC is increased the ratio of course will be decreased how about this one the soluble transferrin receptor assay this one will be increased in iron deficiency anemia but normal in anemia of chronic disease as we've said before rdw rdw is the variation in the sizes of red blood cells and if you go back to our video when we have talked about rdw rome did not fall in a day and neither did the bone marrow so it happens gradually there is a wide variation so the rdw is high but wait there is an important piece of information here ferritin is an acute phase reactant due to influence by interleukin-6 so if i have a patient with iron deficiency anemia i expect to have ferritin to be low however if he has concurrent inflammation maybe ferritin will be high oh how can i know it will be it will not be accurate it will not be helpful that's why the soluble transfer and receptor assay is accurate it's not influenced by interleukin 6 so you'll have this one will be high okay so that's how you know the difference so long story short do not rely on ferritin if you have ongoing inflammation Rome did not fall in a day neither did the bone marrow start as normocytic then become microcytic microcytic cells have increased central pallor and since protoporphyrin is left alone start to pile up so we have increased free erythrocyte protoporphyrin there is no iron to join it poor protoporphyrin you'll be left alone what's the most accurate test to diagnose our deficiency anemia is bone marrow biopsy and by the way it's very painful the periosteum is very sensitive to pain so do we usually do bone marrow biopsy just to diagnose our deficiency anemia no there is an easier way to diagnose it what give the patient iron if they improve it's our deficiency anemia bingo okay what will happen if we did a bone marrow biopsy in a patient with iron deficiency we will have depleted iron stores evident on the biopsy okay we've mentioned that iron deficiency anemia usually have normal white blood count but there is one exception you know what's that yes when there is a hookworm infection hookworms such as ancelostoma duodenale and nicator americans what's the treatment of iron deficiency anemia we start with oral ferrous sulfate it has side effects yes sometimes diarrhea or constipation black stool since iron will come in the stool however this is guaiac negative stool why because it's just iron there is no blood remember guaiac stool test detects rbc's hemoglobin myoglobin since we have only iron in stool it'll be guaiac negative failure of treatment sometimes because patients are not compliant with the treatment okay also blood loss if it's going on it will not fix it just to give them iron absorption problem this is very important resistant cases to treatment 
usually have celiac diseases. Okay, what if first one failed? Let's start intramuscular, intramuscular intravenous iron. What's the biggest side effect? Anaphylaxis, especially if it contains dextran. That's it. That's iron deficiency. Please subscribe. There are new videos coming every week. Thank you for your support. I'll see you in the next video to continue talking about microcytic anemia. Peace.